Hey everybody, Chris Serino here for Sultana Education Foundation's Virtual Classroom. I'm here in beautiful Chestertown, Maryland on the Chester River. Behind me you can see our reproduction of the schooner Sultana. And today on this video, we're gonna be talking about how to measure the pH level of the Chester River. Okay, so when scientists measure the pH level of a solution of liquid, what they're measuring is the concentration of hydrogen ions or hydroxide ions in that solution. So in the world of chemistry, a hydrogen ion is symbolized by a capital H with a positive charge, and a hydroxide ion is a capital OH with a negative charge. Solutions with high concentrations of hydrogen ions are acidic on the low end of the scale, and solutions with hydroxide concentrations that are really high are basic. So let's bring that down to layman's terms. So bringing this down to terms that the average person can understand, when we measure pH, it's measured on a scale between zero and 14, all right? If there's a perfect balance of hydrogen and hydroxide ions, you have H2O or pure water, which has a pH of seven. We consider that to be neutral. Anything with a pH below seven is acidic. Okay, so here's some acidic objects that you might see in your everyday life. Way down here, battery acid has a pH of 1.0, lemon juice 2.0, Coca-Cola 3.0. I think we could all agree that a fish wouldn't want to be hanging out in battery acid. And then way up here on the basic end of the spectrum, you have baking soda at 9.0, ammonia at 11.0 and bleach up here at 13. These are all above seven or in the basic level. So if you're a fish, you don't wanna be way down here below four or way up here above 10. You want that pH to be somewhere in the middle. So to measure the pH of the Chester River today, we got our water sample, and I'm proud to say we're using a Lamott wide range pH test. Lamott is headquartered right here in Chestertown. So here I have a device called a color comparator. I have a little vial to collect a sample, and I have a reagent that we will put into our water sample to determine that pH. All right, so to do this, I'm gonna put this reagent, 10 drops into my uh, water sample, and this reagent will bond with hydrogen ions in here and turn this a different color. So here we go, let's count 10 drops together. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. I put the cap on and shake vigorously. All right, so we're gonna mix this up. We're gonna shake it vigorously back and forth for about a minute here. You can see it's turning a shade of green. Ooh, what does that mean? Okay, so you see we've got our water sample has turned a shade of green after adding the reagent. I've got this slide here. This is a color comparator. Each different color represents a different pH level. This slide measures from three to 6.5, but I actually have a second slide that measures from 7.0 to 10.5. So I'm gonna start by putting the slide here with the lower or acidic values into my color comparator. Put the water sample in here, kind of hold it up to the light and you can see that the color we're closest to, to me looks like it's down here around 6.5. But I also want to look at the higher ranges of the scale by putting in this slide. And again, it's gonna look like we're kind of here between seven and 7.5 when I match the color of that sample to the color and the color comparator. So it looks like the pH is somewhere between 6.5 and 7.5. And the last step is to figure out why do we care about that? Why would we wanna know that? So here's why you wanna know the pH. Fish can only live in certain pH ranges. So we just did a test and determined the pH was somewhere between 6.5 and 7.5. You can see here, if the water was too acidic or below four, we'd be in the no fish zone. You couldn't survive there if you were a fish. Or if the pH had been above about 10.5, we'd also be in the no fish zone because the water would be too basic. Today, our pH was right here in the middle. You can see here's a bluegill sunfish. They could be happy anywhere from four to 10. A yellow perch is happy in four to 10. Uh, a brook trout, they have really specific needs. They can only be in like five to seven. So. For today, at least, the pH range was in an area that would support the marine life 
here in the Chester River. And that's why pH is so important to know. And that's the end of today's lesson. I hope you'll join us for more cool videos here on Sultana Education Foundation's virtual classroom.